the liberal columnist of the New York Times. In the San Francisco Chronicle, columnist Mark Morford wrote, and I quote, spiritually advanced people regard the new president as a light worker who can help usher in a new way of being on the planet, unquote. <laughs> Tell that to an Afghan child whose family has been blown away by Obama's bombs, or a Pakistani child whose house has been visited by one of Obama's drones or a Palestinian child surveying the carnage in Gaza caused by American smart weapons, which, disclosed Seymour Hirsch, were resupplied to Israel for use in the slaughter, and I quote, only after the Obama team let it be known, it would not object. The man who stayed silent on Gaza is the man who now condemns Iran. In a sense, Obama is the myth that is America's last taboo. His most consistent theme was never change, it was power. The United States, he said, and I quote, leads the world in battling immediate evils and promoting the ultimate good. We must lead by building a 21st century military to ensure the security of our people and advance the security of all people. And there is this remarkable st statement, and I quote, at moments of great peril in the past century, our leaders ensured that America, by deed and by example, led and lifted the world, that we stood and fought for the freedom sought by billions of people beyond our borders." Unquote. Words like Lee's remind me of the colonel in the village in Vietnam as he spun much the same nonsense. Since 1945, by deed and by example, to use Obama's words, America has overthrown 50 governments, including democracies, and crushed some 30 liberation movements and bombed countless men, women, and children to death. I'm grateful to Bill Blum for his cataloging of that. And yet here is the 45th president of the United States having stacked his government with warmongers and corporate fraudsters and polluters from the Bush and Clinton eras, promising not only more of the same, but a whole new war in Pakistan, justified by the murderous cliches of Hillary Clinton, cliches like high value targets. Within three days of his inauguration, Obama was ordering the death of people in faraway countries, Pakistan and Afghanistan. And yet, the peace movement, it seems, is prepared to look the other way and believe that the cool Obama will restore, as Krugman wrote, the nation of moral ideals. Not long ago, I visited the American Museum of History in the celebrated Smithsonian Institute in Washington. One of the most popular exhibitions was called The Price of Freedom, Americans at War. It was holiday time and lines of happy people, including many children, shuffled through a Santa's grotto of war and conquest. <laughs> when messages about their nation's great mission were lit up, these included tributes to the quote, and I quote, exceptional Americans who saved a million lives, unquote, in Vietnam, where they were, quote, determined to stop communist expansion, unquote. In Iraq, other brave Americans, quote, employed airstrikes of unprecedented precision, unquote. What was shocking was not so much the revisionism of two of the epic crimes of modern times, but the sheer scale of omission. Like all US presidents, Barack Obama, uh, Bush and Obama have very much in common. The wars of both presidents and the wars of Clinton and Reagan, Carter and Ford, Nixon and Kennedy are justified by the enduring myth of exceptional America. A myth the late Harold Pinter described as, and I quote, a brilliant, witty, highly successful act of hypnosis. <laughs> the clever young man who recently made it to the White House is a very fine hypnotist, partly because 
It is indeed extraordinary to see an African-American at the pinnacle of power in the land of slavery. However, this is the 21st century, and race, together with gender and even class, can be very seductive tools of propaganda. For what is so often overlooked and what matters, I believe, above all, is the class one serves. George Bush's inner circle, from the State Department to the Supreme Court, was perhaps the most multiracial in presidential history. It was PC par excellence. Think Condoleezza Rice, Colin Powell. It was also the most reactionary. Obama's very presence in the White House appears to reaffirm the moral nation. He's a marketing dream. But like Calvin Klein or Benetton, he is a brand that promises something special, something exciting, almost risque, as if he might be radical, as if he might enact change. He makes people feel good. He's a postmodern man with no political baggage, and all that's fake. In his book, Dreams from My Father, Obama refers to the job he took after he graduated from Columbia in 1983. He describes his employer as, and I quote, a consulting house to multinational corporations, unquote. For some reason, he doesn't say who his employer was or what he did there. The employer was Business International Corporation, which has a long history of providing cover for the CIA with covert action and infiltrating unions and the left. I know this because it was especially active in my own country, Australia. Obama doesn't say what he did at Business International, and there may be absolutely nothing sinister, but it seems worthy of inquiry and debate as a clue to perhaps who the man is. During his brief period in the Senate, Obama voted to continue the wars in, Ir in Iraq and Afghanistan. He voted for the Patriot Act. He refused to support a bill for single-payer health care. He supported the death penalty. As a presidential candidate, he received more corporate backing than John McCain. He promised to close Guantanamo as a priority, but instead he's excused torture, reinstated military commissions, kept the Bush Gulag intact, and opposed habeas corpus. Daniel Ellsberg, the great whistleblower, was right, I believe, when he said that under Bush, a military coup had taken place in the United States, giving the Pentagon unprecedented powers. These powers have been reinforced by the presence of Robert Gates, a Bush family crony, and George W. Bush's powerful Secretary of Defense, and by all the Bush Pentagon officials and generals who have kept their jobs under Obama. In the middle of a recession, with millions of Americans losing their jobs and homes, Obama has increased the military budget. In Colombia, he is planning to spend $46 million on a new military base that will support a regime backed by death squads and further the tragic history of Washington's intervention in that region. In a pseudo event in Prague, Obama promised a world without nuclear weapons to a global audience mostly unaware that America is building new tactical nu nuclear weapons designed to blur the distinction between nuclear and conventional war. Like George Bush, he used the absurdity of 